What's all this? What's going on? Gentlemen, I have made a discovery. The bolt that went astray was last shot fired by the murderer. Well, naturally, seeing as his lordship was shot thrice in the back, and if the stray shot had not been fired last, he would have no doubt turned around. But, but why all the shooting? Yes, great Scott, man. Don't you think the room's been shot up enough already? The room has not been harmed. My gun is loaded with bullets. Private detectives rarely go beyond the hands up stage. There is nothing to fear. Well, what happened? Nothing. Mr. Green was just testing a theory. I see. Don't be alarmed. Uh, was Mrs. Peacock very startled? She fainted from shock, sir. Oh dear. We'd better go and see if she's all right, shall we? Yes, sir. So tell me, Mr. Green, how did you come to find this case? Stop the yard for me. They came to solve this mystery right away. So you were informed by the police? It's funny. I can't remember. I can't remember anything since I came here. You know, the question I've been wanting to ask you, Colonel, is how did you find this case? It must have been something more than personal curiosity. Ah, oh, yes. It, it seems I failed to mention that I knew his lordship once. Uh, I should say my father knew him. When uh, I heard the news of his assassination, I began to look into the matter out of interest, and on arriving here at Hampshire, I was asked to aid the investigation by the police, which has been commandeered in a very interesting fashion. Indeed, I cannot say I know much about it myself. But returning to your subject, who exactly was your father? Uh, I hope you are not too startled at the gunfire. This afternoon, Mrs. Peacock? I was most put out. Ah, I win. I can't remember anything since I came here. It's all gone blank. Am I losing my mind? Confidential case. Why, Mr. Green, any news? Come in.
Do the down. I have a question to ask you. A far away. What if what if you found out you were the murderer? Are you saying I am the culprit? No, what if I found out I was the murderer and I couldn't remember anything about it? I would say you were an amnesia victim. What would you do? Well, if I were you, of course I am not, and neither one of us has committed a capital offence as far as I know, but if I were the murderer, and I, as the murderer, had the freedom of the private investigator, I would leave the estate on some petty pretense and leave the country, perhaps, slip off to Eastern Europe or Arabia or somewhere thereabouts. Yes, but you could hardly expect the police to overlook the murderer so easily. But but why do you ask me this? No, no reason. Nothing, nothing at all. your presence, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I have news. This morning, Miss White found something very important in Mr. Green's room, no doubt planted there last night by an agent. The police case file, constructed according to our information. This file contained, as I have said before, the information that will identify the murderer. In this file, there was a letter addressed to me that states that the culprit is not among the original suspects, which gives me the firm belief that he or she is not among us here. The room and weapon are already known, and therefore I will proceed to the information collected on the murderer. The person who killed Lord Chessington is... All right, I did it. I can't remember, but it was me. Has anyone anything to say? I knew it from the start. He's no more a private detective than I am a trapeze artist. <sighs> he himself admits his crime. What more evidence do we need? It was all too clear from the beginning. That murderous face. That undeniable punch. Let the court jury decide his fate. Mr. Green, before I call in the police, I must say that I am shocked that you would look at mail addressed to me. But it would interest you all to know that this file is a forgery. Because the real file arrived this morning. It appears that the forger of this file had some reason to eliminate Mr. Green. Of course, he could hardly expect the police to arrest the wrong man. He obviously thought that Mr. Green would admit to a crime he did not do, or would attempt a speedy escape, allowing him or her, being one of us present, an excuse to kill Mr. Green while on the run, giving us the conclusion that he or she is armed. The forger's intentions are quite clear, and it is very possible that the forger and the murderer are the same person. Now, let us examine the true case file. First the room, then the weapon, and finally, the murderer. 